I get asked all the time how I became a UX designer with a B.Tech degree. Let me tell you, not just B.Tech, I also have an M.Tech degree. <gasps> Two degrees in engineering, but not a single one in design. Well, it is what it is. Why is it so shocking? UX design is largely based on skills and experience. It doesn't matter whether you have a degree or not. I learned it all by practicing consistently, working on mock and real world design projects, building a strong portfolio and so on and so forth. In this video, I'm going to share with you a three month roadmap to help you get started in this field and also some amazing AI tools and Figma plugins to help you get a head start. So make sure you watch this till the end. But first, let us talk about why UX design. Let me give you a selfish reason first. The average salary for a beginner UX designer in India is approximately 10 lakh rupees per year. A not so selfish reason would be it's a noble profession. Sure, not as noble as a doctor and medical practitioner, but it can still potentially change the lives of people because the products that you design solves real world problems that people face. You're hungry, you can order food, you want to travel, you can book your flights, train and cab. Feeling lonely, you can find a friend or a partner. Want to watch a movie, buy your tickets online. So not only is this a high paying, but the need for UX designers in the market is only predicted to increase. The number of UXers has increased from 1000 to 1 million between 1980s and 2017 with further growth to 1 to 100 million UX professionals by 2050. And with AI, the job of a UX designer is not going to vanish, but AI can help make it easier, enabling them to focus on the tougher and the more important aspects. The core of being a UX designer is making the right decisions, as you should be aware that every decision you make will affect the usability of your design. As a UX designer, you need to have that clarity in your mind around which are essential things and what will merely complicate the user journey. It's easy for us to say we care most about our users, providing clear paths, emphasize important actions reduce cognitive loads and build trust and credibility. These are some of the bullet points that you need to check while making design decisions. These core skills and a well-rounded roadmap are more than enough to help you become a UX designer without any degree. And that's where I come in. So without any further delay, let's get started with it. Well, before we even get started with the first month, I need you all to form a habit, a very important habit. Whenever you see anything around you, anything, be it a water bottle, bag, pen, mug, chair, anything and everything, around, make sure you have a habit to ask yourself critical questions about it. For example, if we take a chair, ask yourself, why is the shape like this? What value is it adding? Why is this thing protruding? Why is the recline angle like this? What is making it comfortable, good looking, sturdy or fragile or uncomfortable or ugly? How can it be made better? What changes should be done? When you start doing this in the first few times, it will feel odd as if why am I asking trivial questions to my own self? Am I a psycho? But very soon you will see it becoming a natural habit. Today, when I look at anything, be it a physical object or a digital app or a website, I immediately have few opinions and thoughts popping in my head, which tells me the things that are good, things that are not so good, and things that are terrible that needs urgent attention. You should also be able to tune your mind to the extent that these things come naturally to you. Nope, you won't need years and years of experience to reach there. It can be done pretty fast. You just need to build that habit. All right, let's move to month one. You have to dedicate your first month into learning the fundamentals of UI and UX. Let me quickly tell you the difference between these two. UI is user interface, that is anything a user will interact with. In case of a coffee mug, the handle is one of the interfaces. In the digital world, UI refers to the screens, buttons, toggles, icons and other visual elements that you usually interact with when you're using a website or an app. Whereas UX is a broader term. It refers to the entire experience you have with a product, which includes what problem it is solving. Is it easy to use? Is it delightful to use? Is it confusing? How is it to interact? interact with and how does the overall design make you feel. For example, in the flight booking world, you may have the best designed, easy to use and beautiful app, but while booking your flight, if the payment fails, your money gets deducted, but the flight isn't booked and you do not know what to do about it, it is still a bad experience. Well, yes, payment failure is a technical issue, but it still leads to bad user experience. Another one, let's take the example of Amazon. All the elements that make this design complete are collectively known as the user interface and the feeling that Amazon gives you while you are shopping with the app. For example, how easy is it to find the products that you need? How seamless is their checkout process? How responsive the app is and so on is what makes the user experience. There is yet one more term that is often talked about with UI and UX that is product design. Well, it's actually just a different name, but product design focuses on designing the overall 
product itself, whatever it takes. It might need some UI, some UX, some business, marketing, analytics. In short, your end goal is to design a successful product, whatever you may need to do in the process. I've covered in detail about these terminologies in my previous video. Make sure you check it out from the link in the description. After you're over with the fundamentals, the next step is to learn the principles and the laws of UI and UX. This will determine how your design should look and feel to the customers. Read about visual hierarchy, consistency, contrast, proximity, accessibility for a better understanding. You can even check out my Instagram where I've already covered all these principles with real life examples. Lawsofux.com is a dedicated website where you'll find all the laws related to UX and how to use them in your design. I've also made a separate video on 12 UI UX laws that you can check out if you want to learn from me. If this isn't enough, you can check out uxhints.com and run your designs through their cheat sheet. From design process, typography, user behavior, user testing, it will give you a good understanding on everything that is responsible responsible to make your user interface or user experience stand out. The links of all these things that I have said would be in the description. Other than that, there are many other design books which you can read. The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman is a great book on design thinking. It's always the first and the last recommendation of design books in my list. Beside this, you can read Hooked by Nir Eyal. It is a book that talks about how to build habit performing products, why some products capture widespread attention and others flop. But everyone reads books and laws and blogs and articles. Where is the fun in that? Well, here is a great list of games that will teach you every important skill a good designer needs. Number one, method.ac. It has different games around color, spacing, and letters. The Bezier game helps you master the pen tool and understand how Bezier curve works. The color game helps you learn about different components of color. Current type helps you practice spacing. And with shape type, you can learn how to style your letters. It's centered that this game tests whether you have got the eye for design or not. Answer a yes if you think the dot is aligned to the center of the shape and a no if otherwise. But this game is the real test. It's called UI. Here, you have to tell which design principle is incorrectly applied in the given UI design. It's the best game to learn about UX principles practically. And now that you're clear with your basics, you need to start learning to use the tools and actually get into the process of designing. Figma is the best software for designers which helps you create, share, and test designs for websites, apps, and other digital products. That's it. Look no further. Now, don't comment and ask, can I use this tool or that? That, sure you can, but folks, this is 2024 and there is no tool right now which is better than Figma for digital interface design. Let me repeat, right now in 2024, there is no tool which is better than Figma for digital interface design. So don't waste your time finding the right tool Figma it is. Figma also has a great community of designers from where you can find a number of resources to use in your design and become a pro designer in no time. Of course, I will not tell you to make a big design project in your initial stage, but at least start by replicating simple designs from Behance and Dribble. For example, it can be a simple resume design, Instagram story template, presentation, anything. And just by replicating and making something for your own, these original versions will serve you as the guide in your designs. For example, you can change the color, text, or maybe remove something that you don't feel is relevant or is filling up the space for no reason. And this will in turn help you get familiar with the interface tool and other Figma fundamentals. If you want to learn about this in depth, then I have made a separate tutorial where I cover everything you need to learn about Figma in under 11 minutes. Make sure to check that out from my link in my description. Moving to the most important and the crucial month in your UX design journey. Month two. By the end of this month, you will have enough to present your designs to different companies and startups. Yes, you got me right. This is the month that requires the most hard work and a lot of patience. You can divide this month into three parts of 10 days each. Start by replicating more complicated designs such as mobile apps, websites, and user flows. You can check out Mobin and Refero. These are the two best platforms for web design and app inspiration. They have a wide collection of web screens and iOS app screens that you can start replicating to make your designs. As you replicate the designs, think about the questions that make that design useful or a better experience for the users. Ask yourself, why are they designed the way they are? And why why couldn't it be different? Because when you do that, your answers will mostly line with the UX laws you learned earlier. This will help you learn them even practically. Don't just replicate them. Make your own mock projects too. It can be as simple as making variations of your existing replicas. Suppose you made a replica of the Spotify app's main page and you tweaked a few things in the existing elements and then you replicated its now playing page and you edited out a few elements. That's it. This can be added in your mock project. But make sure that whatever changes you make, they make sense and you have a reason why you have made those changes that way. Otherwise, it doesn't add any value. So make sure you know what you're doing and do not do something just because someone has asked you to do it or you have seen other people doing it. 
you can have different or a variety of mock projects in your portfolio. For example, you can design landing pages of a website, mobile app, homepage, e-commerce website, product page, etc. The goal is to work on enough practice projects at the beginning to ultimately get better in designing in general. Now for the next 10 days, you have to work on redesigns and personal projects. Work on app redesigns and website redesigns. Government apps are much recommended for this because they have a questionable user experience. So if you can iterate and come up with easier and better designs, it will be a great addition to your portfolio. I myself have worked on two app redesigns on this channel, one for the Digiatra app and the other one was the redesign of Amazon's product page. The links to both would be in the description. Redesigns are important. Remember, I had asked you to make a habit to observe and critique everything around you. This is where you get to apply them. If you have indeed built your habit, when you look at any existing design, you will instantly know what is good, what is bad and what needs to be fixed and so on. They not only help you hone your design skills, but also if done correctly, you can actually pitch the newer and better designs to the creators of the particular app or website and use this as a chance to get your first job opportunity. While building redesigns, focus on building personal projects too. You can go to sharpen.design to get mock design briefs for building your design projects. You can even switch categories between branding, marketing and product, UX and you have to devote the last 10 days to making case studies. A UX case study is a detailed account or a story of how a design project was done. It describes the complete process that a designer took to solve a particular problem, the design solution and the decisions behind it. Growth.design contains 50 plus case studies from the top companies in this world. These case studies are unlike any other case study you have seen on the internet. They're crafted in a very unique and interactive way to help viewers understand the problem, the design process and the solutions in the best possible way. It even has a psychology section which helps you understand the UX laws through practical and real life examples. You can also check this case study on Behance for better ideas. On my Medium account, I too had posted some detailed breakdowns on the projects that I kept working on. The first one you should check out is how I designed the listing for a brand new food app. Yes, that was for the Swiggy Daily app that I had designed almost five years back. Also check out how I became an illustrator by discovering a new dimension. Now this one isn't a UX case study, but it'll give you an idea about how to narrate a story. A seemingly simple thing when narrated in the right way can still form a good case study. So check that out for storytelling inspiration. Crafting a clear, concise, proper case study can serve as a bonus to your design portfolio. Start by posting all your work on different platforms like LinkedIn, Dribble, Behance, Medium. Update all your social media profiles. This will help build proof of work and a social presence and help you get genuine constructive feedback which you can use to improve the existing case studies. And if you're curious about my design journey, make sure you check out this video. You'll be sure to leave with a lot of shocks and surprises. And that's where the second month ends. Month three is all about preparing yourself for that job. With applying for job roles and being open to work comes with yet another important skill that a lot of people forget about. Yes, I am talking about communication. If you're not able to communicate your ideas effectively with people, you will struggle finding a job everywhere. The way you can build a skill is by connecting with as many people as you can, both online and offline. With a strong online presence, you can attract different clients and brands that might want to work with you. Another way is to approach them via cold email. Here's a three-step process to apply for a job through cold email. Number one, make a list of companies or organizations that are related to your niche or the companies you want to work with. Number two, draft a well-structured cold email which you will send to them. Make sure to include your portfolio link in that. You can watch my video on how to draft a cold email asking for a job with ChatGPT through the link in my description. Don't just draft one email. Reframe it and maybe in a different style or tone for each company that you're shortlisted in the first step. Also work on making custom case studies for these companies. If you can, it can be as simple as reframing some of your existing case studies to match with the job description or requirements. Once you get your first company or client to work with, keep adding more projects to your portfolio and keep it updated for future job holdings. Once you gain experience from your first role, you can transition to better roles as well. And now the most amazing part of this video, as I had discussed earlier, let's first talk about the best Figma plugins that I often use in this routine. Wireframe Designer. As the name suggests, it helps you create wireframes from simple text prompts. Iconify has all the popular icon source, static and animated icon sets and even emojis all in one place. Magician is an AI-based copy image and icon 
icon generator. Responsify quickly tests your design across different screen sizes to ensure adaptiveness and scalability. Rhina UI has more than 500 plus pre-built UI design components. With type scales, you can generate a simple modular scale for different font sizes to be used in your designs. Sorter helps you sort all your layers in order with just one click. And here are the top five AI tools you must use. Number one, Gamma.app. It is an AI writing assistant for all your design needs from great presentations to case studies, proposals, portfolios, and a lot more. Number two, Font Joy. It helps you choose the best font combinations. Number three, UX Pilot. It's a full AI UX assistant. You can generate wireframes, user flows, flowcharts, do user research, and a lot more with this AI tool. Number four, Chroma. It's the fastest way to discover, search, and save color combinations and palettes. Number five, Adobe Firefly. You can create realistic images and transform your photos into creative visuals in just one click. And that's a wrap, a three-month roadmap to become a UX designer without a degree. Now, in all of these, I might have skipped one small thing, but of course, it is not specific to design, so I expect you to know it already. Whenever you build anything, be it your portfolio or your resume, make sure you get it reviewed by as many people as you can. You can reach out to other designers over LinkedIn and Twitter and request them to review your case study and give their feedback. Get similar feedback from multiple people, three, four, five, six, and then collate all the feedback and see the pattern in all of their feedbacks and use that information to rework on your case study to make them better. Now, the reason why I didn't put a part of any of this three months because it's one of the most basic things that human beings should do. Whenever you work on something, get it reviewed. Do not only believe on the output that you have made. Get help from people. And if you want to learn how to make your first 50,000 as a UI UX designer, check out this video over here. And if you want to master using Figma in 2024, then check out this video. Thanks for watching it till the end. See you in the next one. This is Sapta signing off.